Hi friends! Today is going to be the mid-year book freakout tag. This tag was originally created like in the early 2010s by Chami and Ellie and I will link their channels in the description box down below. I do this almost every year. I don't know that I've done every year but I've done it quite a lot. It is a big one here on booktube. Everybody seems to really like it. It gives you like a good midpoint, a place to kind of wrap up things you've really loved, things you haven't really loved. Um, so I'm just gonna do it again. The first two questions definitely have more than one answer but as I'm going to discuss some of the other ones later on I'll give you one answer and then kind of revert back to it later. Okay cool. So the first question is the best book you've read so far and for me that is House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland. This book follows three sisters who disappeared when they were children for several months and then returned with no memory of where they had been or why they had been gone and it goes into them being the youngest being in high school and the older two having left home and at some point the oldest sister goes missing again so the two middle and young the middle and youngest sister have to get together to try to figure out what's happening now what happened to them before why they don't remember anything prior to their disappearance and all of those things it is a little bit body horror it's a little gruesome but i love it um, Crystal Sutherland is one of my all-time favorite authors. She's an auto buy author for me. I love all of her books so far. Um, this was definitely high on the priority list for this year and high on the list of things that I really really enjoyed. I know not everybody has but that's okay because it's all opinions. I will be linking my Goodreads reviews for all of the books that we talk about in the description box down below if you want to know more of like my full thoughts on any of these. And then we have the best sequel I've read so far this year and for that I'm going with Chain of Iron by Cassandra Clare. If you don't know, this book is the second book in the Last Hours trilogy because Cassie Clear has so many series that I can't remember them all at this point. The Last Hours follows the children of the main characters from the Infernal Devices series. Yeah, that sounds right. Uh, again, so many can't keep track. Basically, this follows their children. There's a whole lot of weird things going on, demony wise. If you don't know Shadowhunter books at this point, you're probably not interested. And if you are interested, you already know what this is about. So I don't feel like I need to talk about it for very long, but I love this series. I love this book. I am a Cassie Clare stan, and I typically love all of the books and just overlook the flaws. And that is just how I live my life. And if you're not okay with that, I don't know what to tell you. We then have a new release that you want to read but haven't yet and for that I have another series that I talk about quite a lot on my channel and that is Witch Shadow by Susan Dinner. This is the fourth book in the Witchland series and there should be one more book after this one so don't believe that this is the last book in the series because most people thought that Blood Witch, the book prior to this, was the last book in the series and they were inaccurate. I don't know why people thought that. A lot of reviews for Blood Witch say things like, this was a horrible ending. I don't know why she ended it like this. She didn't. It wasn't the end. It's not the concluding novel. Neither is this. The Witchland series follows Safi, Azult, Eidwan, and Merrick and they are in this world where they all have magics and there's a lot of political drama and battles and fighting for the rights of yourselves and for others and trying to save your worlds and trying to save your people and kingdoms and all of these things. It is a very vast series. It is very well written. I just finished rereading Blood Witch earlier this month so I will be getting to this one very soon but I don't know that I'm emotionally ready for it so I, I just these books always hurt me in ways so I'm ready but I'm not ready but I need to read it. Cool. The next question is the most anticipated release for the second half of the year. I have a few. Probably the one that I'm most looking forward to is The Last Legacy by Adrian Young. I've really enjoyed Adrian's books this year, uh, last year and this year. I think I found Adrian's books after the second book was published, so I've now read four of them. Three of them I've really loved, one I thought was okay. Um, this next book was like a surprise announcement a few months ago. Out of nowhere they were like, hey by the way we're releasing a companion novel to the Fable series. Hope you enjoy. Um, and that's coming out later this fall so I'm looking forward very much to that. Also uh, Casadore by Romina Garber. I had to think about that for a minute. I really liked Lobizona. 
and I, well, I'm not completely sold on it. I think that the second book is definitely going to sell me on whether I really love it or just think it's okay. So I'm excited for the second book to get more in that world. It's, the world building is very fantastic. I'm really looking forward to that one as well. Biggest disappointment. Lore by Alexander Bracken. I think it was my April wrap up. I think I read this in April. I don't know. I'll link whatever month it was wrap up down below. I rant about this book quite a lot. I really wanted to love this book because it's Medusa. Except it's not. Which is fine on its own. I mean I was told that it was a Medusa retelling but it's not. And that's okay. That was just me going in expecting something that I didn't get. But also it wasn't good. So most disappointing for sure. Biggest surprise this year was Amelia Unabridged by Ashley Shoemaker. I had to look I forgot. This was one of the arcs that I got from Wednesday Books. If you don't know I get a lot of arcs from Wednesday Books. A lot of some of these books we've talked about have been arcs from Wednesday Books. I get a lot and I typically with these YA books I enjoy them. They're like usually like a four star for me. Um, I, I do typically enjoy them. They're not bad by any means. Um, they're just none of them are like my ever, my favorite book ever. But again, it's YA. So like it shouldn't hit me quite the same way as it would a teenager. I'm not the target demographic for that. But that's okay. I do typically really enjoy them. This book knocked me clean off my feet. I was not expecting this to go the way that it went. At the beginning of this book, Amelia and her best friend Jenna have come together over this book series and I think it's like a trilogy and the first two books have been out. It's actually written by someone who is not much older than they are. Um, the first two books have been released. They're waiting for the third book to be released. They are going to like this convention where they're going to hear him talk and he, he cancels last minute. Like they're there and he cancels and Amelia finds out that Jenna was kind of the one that convinced him to cancel. He was having a panic attack and she kind of convinced him to cancel and the girls get into this fight over not only the fact that Jenna convinced him to cancel but that Jenna got to meet him and Amelia didn't and they kind of have this big blow up fight and before they're able to reconcile Jenna dies in a car crash and immediately afterward um, a special edition of this third book shows up at Amelia's regular bookstore. It was addressed to her to their local bookstore and it is the 101st out of 100 copies and Amelia is wondering like if this was a sign from Jenna that she was you know sorry that they fought or um, if it was something you know her trying to figure out where this book had come from because they the only return address was another bookstore in another state and she decides to spend her summer traveling to the state to that bookstore and trying to figure out who sent her this book and inadvertently there meets the author of the book series and his story is it's a doozy uh it'll hurt you it hurt me uh i'm i'm starting to tear up just thinking about it uh this book it really hits you really hard it was so good um it talks a lot about um books and how they bring people together they help you cope they help you deal with things um as someone who when i was in my early 20s lost my best friend and was able to deal with that grief through books and music that we both enjoyed um this book really hit hard for me so I really enjoyed it. Huge surprise. Was not expect. I was expecting to enjoy it. I wasn't expecting to enjoy it quite as much and I wasn't expecting it to take the direction or the route that it did. Favorite new author either a new to you or a debut author. I chose to pick two authors that I read two books each from this year that I think were like super solid books. The first being Katrina Leno who I read this book which is horrid and also Summer Assault. I read both of those this year. I really enjoyed them both as well as Sophie Gonzalez who I read Perfect on Paper which was another Wednesday Books arc this year as well as her previous book um, Only Mostly Devastated. I read this and enjoyed this so much and had found out that she also had a debut novel so I read it as well. Um, I actually think I have her next book that she co-wrote as a, um, an arc as well but it doesn't come out until December. Uh, so I'm very happy, excited about this and I'm very much enjoying Leno's books. I have two more of her books on my shelves to read. So enjoyment. Newest fictional crush. I don't have fictional crushes quite that often. 
uh, mostly because I do read a lot of YA and I'm a 34 year old woman and I shouldn't be crushing on 16 year old boys that's kind of weird um, but this year I did read Crazy Stupid Romance by Alyssa K. Adams which is also my favorite my other favorite sequel of the year um, I told you I would mention that and I did so also my favorite sequel of the year but Noah Logan yes girl like yes absolutely uh, I love his character he's definitely like the kind of guy that I would go for in my real life and so yes absolutely newest favorite character um, again I'm trying to pick a different book for all of these so uh, there were some favorite characters in some of the other books that we talked about and in some of the ones that we will talk about um, but other than those books my new favorite character would be Inej from Six of Crows I fucking love that bitch like she is so like first off she's gutsy she's ballsy she's got an attitude but she's also loyal and loving and she's just all of the things that you want from a character. I fucking love Inej and I would die for her, so. Book that made you cry. Blood Like Magic by Lizelle Sanbury. I have an entire video of me reading this book because I had an arc of it. Uh, I'll link that down below. I cry a lot in that video. Probably 75% of it is just me crying. This is also the other book that I chose as favorite book of the year. I love this book. I love this book so much it hurt me but also it was so good so good but if you want to know more of my full thoughts you can check out the reading vlog because that would make more sense okay next is a book that made you happy i don't have a physical copy of but 10 truths and a dare by ashley elston it is the sequel to 10 blind dates that i read last year and i had an arc of that as well this year uh 10 truths and a dare it follows the same friend group but a different main character um a different friend is the main character and it was just a really good time and I really like that family they are just they're a joy to read and a really good time. Most beautiful book you've bought this year I would say that some of these books that we discussed already could be considered favorite most beautiful book like Blood Like Magic or Witch Shadow or Chain of Iron, House of Hollow all very pretty but I think I want to go with Fable by Adrian Young. I love this book I love that. Why didn't I pull out Fable at the same time I don't know. I love that they make a face like I love that these two books make a face they're gorgeous they're so well done it was genius I, I just love it I think it's it's so pretty so well done the last question is what books do you need to read by the end of the year the answer is always all of them but three that I'm definitely looking forward to other than Witch Shadow which again we already talked about um, would be The Project by Courtney Summers. This was a pre-order that I had this year. Also pre-ordered was Witches Steeped in Gold and also The Box in the Woods uh, by Maureen Johnson, Shannon Smart. But these are all books that I pre-ordered that I have a lot of hype for that I definitely want to read. Um, my goal is to read all of my books that I buy this year which I currently have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten. I have ten books this year that I've bought that I haven't read so I'm doing pretty good on that. That's where I'm at with that. Let me know in the comments below if you have read any of these, if they are on any of your favorites or least favorite lists. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, please leave all that in the comments down below because I would love to talk with you about all of the things. That is all I have for today. I post reading, writing, book, and planner related videos a couple of times a week. If you don't want to miss anything I have going in the future, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye. Oh, my heart is so hollow, but as a never